In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want you to imagine this situation with me. Imagine you're driving along the highway on your way for a nice, long vacation. You finally get out onto the open road, away from civilization, and all of a sudden, you experience car trouble. So you pull over to the side of the road and make a complete stop, and after several attempts of trying to fix the issue and figure out what it is, you still fail to restart your car. At this point, you know you need to call a tow truck, but also you need to call someone else to come and pick up you and all your luggage. No worries. You know a friend that lives close by, and after a brief conversation, he agrees and is already on his way to get you. You see, the car has now been hauled away, and you're standing there in a safe place on the side of the road with all your luggage waiting for him to arrive. And after waiting for a little while, you finally see him coming up. And he's driving a scooter. <laughs> There's absolutely no way everything is going to fit on there. In fact, there's probably just barely enough room for you and you alone. You realize if you try to haul your luggage carrying it yourself, there's a very good chance you will fall off. Now you see, I can't exactly take credit for that story. It was one a previous professor of mine had shared in one of my undergrad classes. But I think it illustrates the point well enough. You see, faith won't let you take any extra baggage along. There's no room for it. That is, we can't believe our own works save us and still believe in Jesus alone. We can't cherry-pick beliefs from Christianity, Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, and the like, and still believe that Christ alone saves. We can't come before God with all our extra baggage and think we'll just waltz into heaven. It just doesn't work that way. For such is the warning and message of our gospel reading today. When the question is asked about how many people will be saved, Jesus redirects the focus from the many Back to the one. Drop all your preconceived notions. For so Jesus tells us, strive to enter through the narrow door. Now it all started with that very simple question. At least it seemed simple enough, right? Maybe it was just curiosity or Maybe there is some level of personal fear behind it. But someone, a random someone from the crowd, pipes up and asks Jesus, Lord, will those who are saved be few? How many, Lord, are getting into eternity? Or maybe the real question behind the question Lord, how hard is it to get into heaven? Will I be able? It doesn't take a hard glance out of the world to see the truth that not everyone will be saved. Sadly, many people have spurned our Lord and his ways, going after detestable things and following the very whims of their hearts and this world. You see, that's why Jesus said these words to us. Strive to enter through the narrow door. For many, I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able. Now the word used there for strive is actually the origin of our word 
agonize, agonize to enter through that narrow door. You see, it should be your only thought and care in all of life. It should occupy every second, every minute, every day of your thought and concern in your mind. Many people don't care to spend that type of physical, emotional, mental energy to enter through that narrow door. They don't care to be bothered by a God who makes claims upon their life or gives them instructions on how to act. But you see, it's, it is a struggle to enter through the narrow door. It's a struggle because we know we're constantly doing everything we're not supposed to be doing. And we're also not doing everything God wants us to do. We want to do better, don't we? We want to lead holy lives. I think that much is at least ingrained in our DNA our drive towards spirituality and God. Oftentimes it leads us in all the wrong directions. So that is the problem. At the end of our struggle, we often find ourselves so bloated with too many false gods and errant ideas about faith and religion. There's too many things that people cling to so closely, and they just don't want to let go. When we come to count on ourselves, on our own self-righteousness, on our own preconceived notions, you see none of those will ever fit through that narrow door. For such is the horror of hell, as Jesus describes. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves cast out. You see, this is the end of our struggle. Or more shall I say, this is the end of where our effort gets us to strive and struggle towards eternity. It leaves us still being shut out of that narrow door with far too much baggage in hand. But when all effort fails, when we've exerted every last ounce of effort to enter through that narrow door, Drop all your baggage right there at the door. Drop your false gods. Drop your trust in yourself and your own effort. Drop everything by which you identify yourself. And trust in the one who has already struggled to enter through. For you see, Jesus is that door the one and only way to eternal life. Faith in him alone opens wide the gates of heaven for you. For Jesus has struggled against the false gods of this world. He struggled against our human pride, against the very allure of wealth and fame. He struggled against our sins against Satan, against everything in this world. And he has won. You see, Jesus already agonized over your salvation by going to the cross and dying in your place. That you may be able to enter eternal life. You see, it's not your striving your agonizing that gets you into heaven. It's Jesus's. It's his agony and death that has cleansed you and stripped you of all that extra baggage weighing you down. That you may enter through the narrow door into life everlasting. For so we find the answer to that original question. 
Lord, how many will be saved? By our own effort? None. None will make it in. Many will try and none will succeed. But by Jesus' effort, by Jesus' struggling, the number will be beyond counting. For so we also read in our gospel, and people will come from east and west, from north and south, and recline at table in the kingdom of God. Behold, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. You see, it's the very ones who don't deserve it. It's these last ones that Jesus welcomes with open arms. It's those who have already died to Christ in baptism, that they may live eternally with God. For come, come, dear saints, and recline at the table of our Lord. Take, eat, take, drink. The very body and blood of Christ poured out for you. Just as Revelation says, it will be myriads of myriads who come from every tribe and nation and language to enter into eternal life. And so shall you, by faith alone in Christ. So, dear saints, cling to nothing else than this. Jesus Christ crucified and risen for you. Cling to the agony and death of Christ, which has opened wide the gates of heaven. And so strive, not by effort, but in faith that you may enter through that narrow door and be welcome to life everlasting. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God surpasses all understanding. Guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. <laughs>